Hello and welcome to the course where we are learning about business strategy. While in the previous videos we have talked about the macro environment of an organization, the industry that is surrounding the organization, and we are still going to stay within this industry layer because in this video we are going to talk about industry life cycle, which is a wonderful topic from my perspective, and it is one of the most useful models, business models, that you might meet within your career. So let's go for it. As you can see, industry life cycle consists of five stages you might be able to find some other models they are more or less similar and have similar ideas so it really depends upon you which one you choose but as i said it's a very useful model so stage one is development stage two is growth then we have a shakeout stage then we have maturity and decline stage what is this industry life cycle can it be seen in the real world of course it can Imagine, for instance, CD players, at least for those who still remember them. It was in 1984 when Sony introduced the first CD player. It was then in 1995 when we have seen the golden times of CD players. Then in 2000, people started to already opt out of CD players and adopt MP3 players, which are much smaller and were easier to carry around and could handle more songs and maybe a better quality of audio and so on and so on simply a better product in 2010 it was already extremely rare to meet someone on the street with a cd player so as you can see the industry life cycle for cd players was around 25 years long very interesting story let's go for another one uh, car industry. We are still using cars, right? So it was in 1903 when Ford introduced its first Model A, so it can be seen as the start of this industry. Then around 1970s we can see the golden era for cars and maybe right now around 2010-2020 we are in the maturity or shakeout stage and maybe a decline for this industry is going to come i actually believe in that so in 50 years we might see that cars are finally replaced with something else and simply innovation happens again so the same thing that happened to cd players might happen to car industry so that would mean that the industry life cycle for cars was approximately 150 or 170 years long so as you can see this model really has a lot of real world applications okay let's go in details talking about the particular stages at first we have the development stage this is an experimental one typically with few players little direct rivalry and differentiated products well what's happening we have a market that someone figured out could exist this market is not existent yet there are just few entrepreneurs who are thinking hey uh, these personal computers they might be a thing imagine we are a company or we are an entrepreneur that would like to produce personal computers we would actually have to fly back to 1960s and 1970s to be able to do so we now see that it's a very profitable industry but back then no one really saw it there were just few firms that were eager to explore this opportunity so what is happening is that these few firms that will try to set up this new industry, they are not going to compete with, with each other because they don't have to. The consumers, the potential consumers, do not even know that they have a need for this product that these new entrepreneurs are trying to produce. So the companies are really going to be focused on themselves and on their products. And the key to be successful within this stage is of course going to be innovation that is the development stage if the development stage is successful and some consumers start to realize okay these personal computers might be a thing and there is going to be some purchase power for them we move to the second stage which is called the growth stage there is a very little direct rivalry as economic pie is large and unexploited for everyone who is in the market so what is happening we see uh, that the first few thousand people have purchased personal computers and now their friends and general people, uh, general masses, are starting to adopt this idea as well and they're going to purchase it. So there is going to be so much purchase power that the companies that are in the market still do not have to compete with each other because, the, because of the, 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 the huge purchase power. 
this is a very favorable situation. Markets are growing and inclining every day. So if you are able to identify which industry is in the growth stage, there certainly is going to be profit for you if you manage your own processes very well, because you still don't have to care too much about your competition. And the key in this stage is of course going to be growth. There is this huge purchase power and you need to satisfy it. If you will not be able to grow fast enough and satisfy this purchase power, then you are going to fail even within this stage. So that is the growth stage. Thirdly, we have the shakeout stage. This begins as the growth rate starts to decline so that increased rivalry forces weakest of the new entrants out of the business. So right now we are still in the personal computer market. We have seen the first company succeed within the development stage. Then we have seen years of the uh, growth stage where it was golden times and everyone was purchasing these personal computers. However, nowadays the market is already quite penetrated. There has been millions of personal computers sold and the purchase power starts to decline. People still want personal computers, but they already own them. So it will take a couple of years before they purchase a new one. That is simply a decline in the purchase power. So some of the companies are going to fail because there are other stronger players within the market. So you see competition really starts to take place here. Now we move right away to the maturity stage. This is where the five forces and competitive rivalry starts to be really strong. So this is where our previous model, Porter's five forces framework, starts to be really interesting. What's the reason? How should we imagine this maturity stage? Well, um, producers are still producing a lot of personal computers trying to sell them to the market. But maybe the people who are within the market, the consumers, start to be already quite tired of them. Personal computers have been around for 40 years and there is not too much space for innovation. The next big shift maybe starts to occur. So there is another industry which is directly competing with personal computers industry. Maybe uh, smartphones and mobile devices are indirectly competing with the personal computers industry. There might be some users who will, instead of purchasing personal computer, purchase simply a smartphone and they are good enough with it. So the purchase power already declines. The companies that are within the market still can remain profitable. However, they have to establish sort of um, cost controls and economies of scales. We have touched upon economies of scales in the previous video. It's simply an idea that you should try to minimize a unit cost for yourself. So we are producing a lot of products to the masses that are within the market. And thanks to that, you will have your unit cost very low. So that is the maturity stage. Now we move to the decline stage. Everything that starts someday has to end someday. And that's why we come to the decline stage. Imagine a scenario that no one really wants personal computers anymore, that smartphones or some hologram technologies or some augmented reality become so good that people just do not have a need to purchase a personal computer anymore. There still will be some late adopters or, or people who are generally uh, not that eager for a switch to completely new industry or for a rapid change, they're still going to be buying some personal computers, but simply the purchase power is going to decrease rapidly. Well, what the companies have to do when they are within such industry, it's not going to be a favorable situation. They are going to have to do some price cuts. So cost control is a key within this market. Now, um, it's a truth that don't imagine that there is an industry that uh, sort of develops itself, grows, shakes out, matures and declines and the companies that are in the market are simply done. No, they are going to switch for the industry, for the industry life cycle that is replacing the previous life cycle. So as we have seen, once we're on the maturity stage, new industry for say uh, mobile devices occurred, these companies are already going to diversify their product portfolio and they're going to produce some mobile devices as well. So they will hop on the next industry life cycle and simply let this old industry life cycle die out while they are already in the new 
industry life cycle. This is how, at least from my perspective, uh, industries work. And I try to simplify this idea a lot. I hope that I have succeeded. And in the upcoming video, we are going to go one layer down. And we are going to talk about competition that is surrounding an organization. And this was an industry life cycle that we can use to analyze industries that are surrounding organizations.